Hey guys, it's the Squishy Monster, and last year I did a fresh strawberry ice cream with no eggs and no ice cream machine. And similarly, it inspired me to whip up this ice cream, again with no eggs and no machine, but it's a little bit different, but both recipes have just a few ingredients and it comes up in no time. And I'll post the link for the other ice cream below, but today we're going to make a fresh strawberry rhubarb ice cream. There are only a few ingredients in this ice cream, so it's really important to use really high quality ingredients. So I've sourced some strawberries and some rhubarb from my local farmer's market, and I love supporting local anyways. And then with the coconut milk, it's really important not to use the stuff that's in the refrigerated section, but the thick, creamy stuff that floats the top. So it's full fat, not light coconut milk. And when you open it up, you crack it open, and then all the cream floats the top, and that's when you want to spoon out. That's the only part we want to use, not the clear liquid underneath. So you want to separate. Next, I want to softly cook down my strawberries and my rhubarb. And then you want to drip in your, I'm using a combination of agave and honey because I ran out of honey, but you can also use sugar here and just drip that thick mess in there. When your honeyed strawberry and rhubarb mixture has cooled down, you want to slip it into a blender or food processor, either works, and scrape it all into the bottom just like that. And then take your cream, your coconut cream, and also tip that in there as well. And scrape out every last bit because you want it in your belly and not in the trash or down the drain. So make sure all of that gets in there. And then it's simple as popping the top on and giving it a whirl. I've lined a casserole dish with some parchment just to ensure that when I take it back out after I've frozen the ice cream base that I can kind of churn it or mimic a churn and I'm going to blend it again through a blender or food processor to make sure it gets a really nice creamy smooth mouthfeel. But first thing is first, you want to pour it all into your dish and freeze it covered in the fr freezer until it sets and then you want to take it back out and then you want to, like I said, whirl it again to give it that creamy texture. About 15 minutes ago, I set out my ice cream base that solidified overnight and let it sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes and then I flipped it over and then cut little cubes into um, and put them in the sweet processor. And I want to kind of mimic a churn to get that creamy smooth texture. So that's what's in my food processor. And I want to put the top on and let it whirl. After you've broken up all the ice crystals, what, you're en what you end up with is this thick creamy ice cream, just like that. And you want to scoop it back into your dish or whatever you're putting it in. And you want to let it set again in the refrigerator. The ice cream is ready when it's a nice, scoopable consistency. So I'm going to take my ice cream scoop and go in there. Look at that. I feel like with desserts that you have to wait on, it makes the anticipation that much greater. I cannot wait to dig in for a bite. Let's see how our ice cream turned out. Look at that bite. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Mmm. So there's a bit of tartness going on with the sweetness of the strawberries and that rich coconut cream is coming in. It's really luscious and kind of ties everything together. It's got an incredible mouthfeel. It's completely different than I feel like dairy milk would be. It's that richness that kind of comes through. And I really hope I've encouraged you guys to make ice cream at home even if you don't have a machine. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. This is